All right, so in the next phase of this, now that we understand, I mean, these functions can represent anything. I mean, the f of x can be whatever, profit function, a cost function, revenue function, it could be a population function, it can be a time function, whatever, all right? It can be anything in the real world. Um, <clears throat> but now if uh, we need something more sophisticated, so scientists collected data over here, scientists have collected data over here, how can these functions can now interrelate with each other? And so what can happen is, as long as they have the same independent variable here, all right, which is all x, they're all using x, all right, then <clears throat> what we can do is we can actually write something like this. We can say f plus g. Now, if this was not given to us and we said f plus g, I don't know what f is. I don't know what g is. And I'm going to add them. I can't. There's nowhere for me to go. So this actually has to be given to you. You have to know that, okay, well, f is a function with an independent variable of x, and g is a function with an independent variable of x, so I can actually add the two functions together. So you need the right context in order to see, you know, in order to actually calculate f plus g. Now what you'll also see is that f plus g here can also be written like this, f plus g, and then write in the x to show that you are actually doing the uh, independent variable of x. So these mean the same thing as long as this has its context, right? Okay, we have to have a context in order to understand that f and g are actually functions and not just two variables. The variable actually is just x. And so it's simple. Um, now, if this is f plus g, what we're saying is, well, here's our f, okay, x squared plus 2 plus g. Well, g... Okay, I'll put these actually in parentheses, but you can kind of see it doesn't matter when you're using addition because all you're going to do is combine like terms. And so this is uh, like terms here is just uh, x squared. Uh, the 2 will actually combine with this guy, but 3x is just on his own. And so it looks like um, I've got x squared plus 3x minus 3 equals f plus g. All right, so that's just function addition. You are literally doing like the very first week of school, but now we're you know, we're doing the same thing now than what we were doing the first week of school, but now we actually have things defined as functions, okay? Now, we can keep going with this. We can say, uh, what is h minus g? Okay, and I'll write it that way, h minus g. Okay, well, h we have up here, defined here as 9x. So it's 9x, that's our h of x, minus, and I'm going to put a minus sign, but here I'm going to close this up. I'm going to minus the entire function there. So that gives us 9x distribute here. So I get a negative 3x, but then I also get a plus 5. Now 9x and 3x are like terms, and so we get a 6x plus 5, and that would be our final answer. That is h minus g of x equals this function here. All right. Now this is very similar to the very first example that we did. Um, in the last video, but here we're just kind of playing with the skeletons. We're not actually doing any real world stuff. We're just kind of learning the manipulations of it. Now, I don't know where I'm at on the time here, but uh, we can do multiplication as well. Um, and I can actually put functions in functions. That is called function composition, and that's going to be your next homework assignment for this section. So I'm going to put that on a shelf. Right now, let's just do um, multiplication. So what is that going to look like? Well, multiplication, let's just say that I've got uh, f of x, here's a dot, times g of x. Okay, now sometimes maybe you just would have seen it f times g. Okay, as long as you know that f and g are de previously defined functions, that's all you need to do. All right, so uh, let's see, f is x squared plus 2, and g is 3x minus 5. So we are going to... Um, we're going to distribute. So that is going to be x squared times 3x is 3x to the third power. x times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Uh, 2 times negative th uh, positive 3x is plus 6x. And then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. You'll notice that none of these are like terms. And so we're, we're finished. We're done. Okay. All right. So now um, let's do some division. Now I want to do a division uh, that's going to kind of show you um,
Yeah. Um, I want to, that it's going to require you to factor. And this actually is example three. Now, first of all, for your homework, just know that when you multiply t two things, right, um, what will happen, you're going to see a lot of examples in your homework that involve, like, um, what is the, let's see, for example, revenue equals the demand times the, um, um, the price, right? Okay, so here P is not profit, it's actually price, okay? And this is demand. Okay, so whatever the demand is, all right, that's going to have its own function, and then X is actually going to be its own function. So when you multiply these two, demand times price, you actually get the revenue. That's how much money is coming into you, okay? And so you can see that revenue is its own function. So now let's go back to our original function here when we said that profit equals revenue um, minus cost, right? Now, if revenue is uh, the demand times price, we can make this more sophisticated. We can say the profit equals the demand times price, that's revenue, uh, minus the cost. Okay, so you can see that we've got functions in functions and functions. Right now, this gets really complicated when you're dealing with computer programming. In fact, in computer programming, there is a word called function that does this stuff for you. Okay, you write a function for this, you write a function for this, and that's the name of your you know function. So, functions and functions and functions happens all the time. All right, so um, keep that in mind when you are doing multiplication. Okay, so this would be a multiplication, then that would be a subtraction, and then that's the actual value. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, the division, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the example uh, from the textbook. Um, you've got f of x equals x minus 7, and then you have g of x equals um, 2x squared. That's Atticus being Godzilla. All right, and let's say that I wanted to find what is f divided by g. Okay, no big deal. So I go x. Minus seven. Yeah, what's up? Daddy, what's up? That was not Atticus. That was me that did that. That was you? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. You sounded. You two sounded alike. All right. So now you would think that this is completely done, right? I can't divide. But what? this is a binomial linear function, a linear binomial, and this is a quadratic trinomial. So I, I'm done, right? No. Because what if this is factorable? What if inside here is a factor of x minus seven? So what we do is we go and do our AC method. It's still there for us, right? AC method. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. I'm looking for factors of negative 14 that add up to negative 13. That would be negative 14 and 1. So this never leaves you. It goes all, follows you all the way down through all of your college algebra. Okay, it goes on forever, factoring. So let's see, I've got 2x squared minus 14x plus 1x minus 7. All right, and if you remember, okay, this is the AC method. So I split this guy in the middle. I take a 2x out, and I get an x minus 7. Okay, now you can already see i got an x minus 7 there. I've got an x minus 7. Oh, i got an x minus 7 here. So this thing, okay, this is kind of cool. All right, so what happens is I lasso this. So I get a 2x plus 1 times x minus 7. Remember, I can cross one of these out now because I'm factoring out two of the terms. Uh, I'm factoring out x minus 7 out of both terms. And uh, what is left is an x minus 7 up there. I got a 2x plus 1 here and an x minus 7 here. So if I put parentheses around that, maybe it's helpful in seeing that these guys actually do cancel out. So this more complicated thing is actually this less complicated thing, all right? Because when they factor out, they don't, uh, when they can't quote unquote cancel, they actually go to one, they don't go to actually zero, okay? So x minus seven divided by x minus seven is one, and you still have two x plus one left over, so that is actually your final answer. So when you divide um, these, pre you know, these predefined functions, just know you're probably gonna be factoring. Okay, you're going to be using either the X method or the AC method. Okay, so that that basically seals the deal for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You're doing the same thing that we did in the beginning of the year, but now our, our symbolism has got more sophisticated. All right, 
All right, so now you guys are ready to kind of crunch the homework. I don't know how many problems there are going to be, but I'll post that ASAP. And then uh, tomorrow we'll do the composition. All right? All right, have a great day. Enjoy the weather. All right, adios.